Hello, I'm Adrian, and welcome to the latest chapter of Analytical Story Battle. I haven't made a video for a while as I'm still editing my feature film, but I wanted to continue where I last left the story off. If this is your first episode, I highly recommend watching the previous entries as there's an ongoing original story that is being developed involving characters from both DC and Marvel, and the stakes are about to get even higher. Last time Black Canary fought Black Widow, but that was actually occurring simultaneously to another episode in the series. To not confuse you any further, check out the playlist in the description below for all the previous episodes. For those of you who are fully caught up, the next battle takes place after Captain America and Batman have fought each other, and it actually will contain the big revelation as to who the main villain for this original story is. The aim of this series is to provide an experimental battle where you'll get to hear what's going on in the fighter's mind and see their moment to moment thoughts broken down extensively so you can feel like you're in the fight with them. This chapter in particular is unique to the others in that the Venom I will be using is based on his appearance in Spider-Man. 3, but it is not the same Eddie Brock Jr. Here we will be dealing with Eddie Brock Sr., who I will base his personality on much more closely to how he is represented in the comics from the 90s. Spawn is based on how he behaves and appears in the 1997 film of the same name. Without further ado, it's time for another experimental educational battle, a what if scenario to determine who would win in a hand to hand fight Venom or Spawn? My son was murdered by Spider-Man, and the media portrayed him as a hero. A hero who saved the city from the terror of an alien being and a giant shape-shifting pile of radioactive sand. They didn't even bother naming that alien, but it was all that was left of my son. I should have known something was deeply wrong with him. I should have paid more attention to him, but why waste time thinking about those things? The only thing that matters now is tracking down Spider-Man and killing him. An eye for an eye. I arrived at the construction site where the battle occurred. Police tape was all over the place, but at three in the morning, nobody cared. I spotted a giant pile of beams. Some of them were even arranged in what appeared to be a makeshift cage. I didn't know why, but I felt a certain amount of dread standing there. I somehow knew that my son met his end there. I knelt down to inspect the floor a little closer, and I caught something out of the corner of my eye. It looked small, black, and gelatinous. The thing was somehow beckoning me. Calling me over, I leaned in more closely to the ground. In the blink of an eye, the black ooze jumped into my index finger and slowly began to wrap itself around it. It somehow continued to expand itself several times its size and covered my hand. In just a few more moments, it climbed across my entire arm and after just 30 seconds my entire body and head was covered by it. My head started throbbing in pain and I started to learn everything. Everything that happened to my son his last thoughts, his feelings, his killer, Peter, Peter Parker, is Spider-Man. Bugle kid, wimpy guy, loves a girl named Mary Jane. This continues for what feels like hours and upon opening my eyes, I realized it was dawn and I was sitting atop the tallest skyscraper in Manhattan. I now know everything about Peter Parker and I will not rest until I've killed him. No, worse annihilated him like he did to Eddie. My hatred towards him makes me feel even stronger. From this moment forward, I am... No. You're right. We are poison to him. That's why we call ourselves Venom. We swing over to the Daily Bugle, as we now know our buddy Parker should be strolling into the office any moment now, no doubt trying to peddle his horrible pictures of Spider-Man to Jameson. As we're getting closer, we see a giant red thing that has apparently enclosed the entire building. It's unlike anything we've ever seen before. We cautiously land at the building next to it and get a glimpse of a figure beneath the red cape. It seems to have a life of its own. Regardless, that thing is between us and Spider-Man, so we must put a stop to it. We launch our webbing to attach to the side of the building and upon landing 10 meters from the creature, let out a fearsome roar. The creature is humanoid and closely resembles the black and white pattern I'm currently sporting. We are Venom, we tell him. Who are you? But he pays us no heed and begins to attack us immediately. Out of nowhere, two giant chains with skulls fly out of his torso and begin to attack us. The symbiote reacts immediately, putting me out of harm's way and not letting the skulls hit us. Once we dodge the fourth hit, we go in for a flying sidekick, but a piece of his flowing cape hardens like steel and we bounce right off of him. As we fly through the air, he pulls out a submachine gun and fires at us. Bracing for impact, I'm pleased to find out that we are bulletproof. 
The bullets are gently absorbed into the symbiote, and as if waiting for my command, spring right back out at our new friend. Some get through, but in a manner very similar to my suit, he begins to heal as well. Now's our time to get in close. We fire our webbing at the wall next to him, and lunge at him with a strong drop kick. His cape is not fast enough to harden, and the impact causes him to fly straight to the ground. I fall up with a knee, two uppercuts, a haymaker, and a spinning sidekick. He responds with several kicks and punches of his own, but I see the opening I need when he extends his spinning hook kick for a second too long, and I use a chance to strike his leg with all my might. I can hear a very loud crack, but the man is still fighting me. The suit must have healing properties that extend beyond this world. We go in for a tackle and at the very last second his entire skin is pierced by razor sharp spikes. We luckily manage to offset the tackle by just a few centimeters, giving us precious seconds to not get impaled by those things. As we drop by a nearby wall, we notice that it takes him a couple beats to get into the groove of things again. We attach another web to the ceiling and use it to drop kick our way into another heavy hitting punch and kick combo. It becomes very clear to us that we need to come up with a way to end this fight that doesn't involve only using our strength. I have the strength of a peak Olympic weightlifter, and this symbiote adds in the combined strength of its own entity as well as Spider-Man's, but it doesn't seem enough to bring him down for good. He seems to never get tired, unless he's using his suit's stronger powers. That must be the only thing that slows him down. His recovery time, all I have to do is make him exhaust himself by making him fire everything he's got at me. I launch a quick jab and cross to get his attention and backflip onto a nearby pillar. Is that all you've got? We're tired of playing with you. And that does a trick. He unleashes an attack I've never seen before, nor care to ever see again, as it seems like his whole suit was used to send every last shrapnel of power he had against me. The hardened cape, the skull chains, and even massive spikes, along with searing green bolts of lightning that were vaporizing everything they were touching. I dodge, jump, and flip out of the way of every single thing he's throwing at me, thanks to the symbiote's reflexes, and gradually make my way in close enough to deliver the strongest front kick in my life. We follow it up with two punches to the gut, and the haymaker right across the face. He promptly lands on the ground five meters away from me. We walk over to him and see the mask slowly peel itself off to reveal his head. What happened to his face? He's severely burnt. We don't think we did that. Did we kill him? We can't allow ourselves to sink to the level of Spider-Man. He might be an innocent. We kneel beside him and notice he is slowly regaining consciousness. Thank you, he says. What? We reply. Thank you for beating some sense into me. I was aware of my actions, but I couldn't control them. It's like I was an autopilot or something, he adds. Who are you? What are you doing here? I inquire. I'm Spawn, and I've sworn to protect Earth from the evils of Hell. I don't know how, but somehow this random person I had never met before managed to manipulate me into thinking that I needed to open a portal to Hell. He knew the Daily Bugle would be the perfect epicenter for such a portal to be created. Last thing I remember is being sprayed with some sort of gas. It made me feel fear like never before. This is all very riveting, but we need to find. He shoots his arm on and grabs ours. You need to stop him, Venom. I don't know the entirety of what he's planning, but it's not good, he says. We don't have time for this. You seem perfectly capable of handling this yourself. I can't. I need to go back to hell to reverse the damage I've already done up here. When I was opening the portal, I detected strong anomalies around there. He points at a large mansion that sits atop a winding road. I don't even think that was there up until yesterday. Something tells me whoever is in that mansion knows what's going on. As soon as he mentions that, my other, the symbiote, tells me that he is indeed correct. That mansion wasn't there. I need to deal with this roadblock in order to crush the spider. Fine, we'll check it out, I assure him. Tell them about opening the portal to hell. It might help them make sense of things. As he makes his way to the closing portal, I turn around and yell, Wait, you never mentioned his name. Who did this to you? And he replies, he calls himself Batman. And there you have it. What did you think of the fight? Let me know in the comments below and make sure to catch up on the previous episode so you can fill yourself in on the story so far. So this fight was really fun to do because I happen to be a big fan of both these awesome Todd McFarlane characters. I ended up giving the victory to Venom by making good on the threat given to Spawn in his film, that if he used the powers of his suit for too long, he would die. But I didn't want to kill the guy, so I just made him tire himself out instead. 
I also figured that the symbiote has the advantage of having a pseudo spider sense of sorts. In other words, the symbiote has a living mind of its own. It's not just armor that follows the commands of its wearer, it actively participates in the battle as well, and can read a situation and adapt to it quickly. The victory was also an homage to the way Spider-Man originally defeated Venom in the comics, by making him exhaust the suit by firing too much organic webbing. If you're still watching the video, thank you. I'd like to tell you that I will be taking out a couple more chapters in this saga, and do have an endpoint in mind. The story will culminate in an awesome, epic battle. And yes, you probably have questions as to how Batman is a main villain, and those will be addressed in the next episode featuring a highly requested character in the comments. Join my Patreon to get access to cool behind the scenes stuff and a bunch of other rewards. Subscribe and you can follow me on my Twitter, Instagram, and brand new Facebook fan page, Godzilla Rex. See you next time.